link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you enjoy our program, we would appreciate your donations to help defer the cost of continuing this work. Send donations to The Israel of God, 2515 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Watching us live on the internet. Good afternoon. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, before we get this lesson, I have a, a couple of things I want to say. One thing is, we have people asking us for letters to keep their children from getting immunization shots. We don't have no letter for that, and we don't give out letters for that. Okay? So if you have a problem with the immunization, uh, 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 with your child being immunized, then I'm telling you something, we don't have nothing to do with that. We don't give no letters. We have nothing to do with any medical treatment of anybody, okay? And uh, uh, people are trying to get us to do that. But I'm gonna tell you a little story. When the Israeli God was in the storefront, we had some brothers that called themselves the East Side Jakes. <laughs> they, they came to the class. First thing is their wives couldn't wear no lipstick or no kind of makeup. And that created a problem because the brothers that told their wives that, they was looking at the other sisters that had on lipstick and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> now their wives mad at them. Another thing is they didn't believe in going to the doctor and they didn't and they had taken their children out of school. And of course, with me, that was obnoxious and I went to war. I just told them point blank, I don't want you around here. If you're sick, you're gonna cough and get on somebody else and get them sick. So you better start taking your uh, uh, going to doctors if you want to keep coming here. And again, too, you're gonna put your children back in school. And we had a big fight. But the whole thing is, except for one sister and brother, everybody saw the reason and put their children back in school. And so, and uh, I know a couple of them now because they finished college, they hold big positions in various companies. And every time they come here, I don't say nothing, but I think about it and I feel real good about it. Because we don't see, I don't see no reason why if you're sick, you shouldn't go to a doctor. I don't see no reason why that if uh, uh, that your children should not go to school so they can grow up and be ignorant. Ain't no reason for that. This is a, and, and again too, I know I don't want my wife looking like a broomstick. <laughs> so I don't have no problem with women looking good. So. So we're not going to have, so we're not, so I want, it, I want it understood. If your children need an immunization shot, we don't have nothing to do with it. I don't have nothing wrong with it. You know, I got mine when I was in school. And uh, uh, we only deal with the word of God here, sisters and brothers. Nothing else. So another thing come across is floating and 
some people and followed after it, and uh, after some of these other Israelite groups that have a problem with Jesus. And they saying that, well, you know, you shouldn't pay tithes because the Levites ain't here until the Levites are here. Uh, uh, who are you going to pay your tithes to? I wonder if uh, Abraham asked Melchizedek that. I wonder what J Jacob was talking about when he promised God when he was on his way to Panadaram, when he didn't have no wife, no children, or nothing. I wonder what he was saying to God when he told you, whatever you give me, I will give you 10% of it. I wonder why Cain and Abel was motivated to make an offering to the Lord. Levite wasn't there on none of these places, wasn't he? So I'm going to tell you something, sisters and brothers, and this is the truth. Israel of God is big is because we do what the Lord said. We pay tithe. Look, you couldn't be here without tithe. You couldn't have air conditioning without time. We've got 23 congregations. We have a fleet of trucks out of town right now. We have people flying out of town on planes every weekend. We pay the uh, 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 utilities for 23 classes. We have at least uh, uh, eight or nine. We pay uh, uh, leases for every month. We buy chairs like these for every congregation. We just sent a truckload of chairs, tables, and a roster to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And this place we're building out here in Riverdale, we're around $15 million now. So now, if we didn't take tithes, then where would the Israel of God be? Look at the internet we got, telephone system we got. We have to take care of people in Zimbabwe with, with, with preaching. They don't have no money, but being broke and poor don't mean you shouldn't be able to hear the word of God. You understand what I'm saying? So if don't nobody pay their tithes, you have a problem. Had a Hebrew, Hebrew camp gave a little picnic. I gave a $500 check. It's just like the coming of the Lord because didn't nobody have no money. You understand what I'm saying? So you get all these people and you ain't got to pay no tithes. Watch them and see where they go to class at. You got two, three here in somebody's living room. One or two here in somebody's basement. Sisters and brothers, this is the Lord's business. All the money that's coming here is the Lord's business. Nobody gets paid. I mean nobody. All these brothers running. I got a slew of brothers out of town right now with the vans and the airplanes. They're working for the same thing I'm working for, salvation. So all the money that's taken in in the Israel of God go directly to God's business. The only people get paid in the Israel of God are the secretaries and the ones that do the janitorial service. And not all in all camps are they getting paid for that, sisters and brothers. So when somebody talking to you, telling you that you don't have to pay no tithes, I said, what do you hold service at? I bet you it's in their living room. <laughs> so I don't want to hear that kind of talk. We ain't getting off in the medical business, and we ain't getting off into uh, uh, this thing where you ain't going to support the Lord's program. So now let's get to the lesson. I say all the time, the lessons that I do, sisters and brothers, are uh, because I hear somebody make an error. Uh, either... Teach falsehood. Like I hear this great big old preacher, he's in the movies and everything else. But I heard him say one time that, look, it's not important that you know God. The important thing is that God know you. I'm going to tell you something, sisters and brothers. If you don't know God, he ain't going to know you. And then you got people running around saying, once you're saved, you're always saved. If you think you're always saved, you don't know God either. And we have people around here telling me, you know, the Lord and chosen and has sent me to do nothing, but you don't know no law. So what do you know? But this big thing, sisters and brothers, that you got to know that it's not important that you know God. It's one of the biggest misunderstandings that you can put out there. In fact, the reason that because of that kind of conversation, I have a title of this lesson with a question. And the question is, how are we called, known, and chosen? How are we called, 
known and chosen. We need to look at this so we can understand this because it's obvious that this understanding have escaped a whole lot of people. Like you had this one preacher get up, well-known preacher, say, you ain't got to keep the commandments. All you got to do is do what God say. Well, ain't that what God say? <laughs> you know, these people are so confused until they contradict themselves, and the people sitting in front of them don't even pick up on the contradiction. So we're going to start this in Romans, the eighth chapter. To show you, sisters and brothers, you got to know God before he know you. And we're going to examine how you are called to God and how you are chosen. Because these things need to be looked into. You know, you, get, you, you, get, you, you have people so busy trying to circumvent the word of God until they are like an open sore. Anybody that have any eyes can see that they have a problem, that they don't have no understanding. And I'm going to tell you something. You have to have understanding to save yourself. You got to work out your own salvation. Can't nobody do it for you. You don't leave your salvation in the hands of no man. I don't care who he is. Take possession of your own salvation and study for yourself. That's why when people come here, I tell you, when, you, when people invite people, tell them to bring a Bible. Tell them to bring a pen and, 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 a, and paper. And tell them to have some patience because we're going to school. Mm -hmm. If you go to church and don't learn nothing, you're in the wrong place. I don't care who you are. Because that's why you come here to learn how to get salvation. So we're going to deal with this. We're going to show you how uh, uh, we are called, known, and chosen. But look what Paul wrote. To the Romans here. We're going to start it in verse 28. Romans 8 and verse 28. Okay, go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh-huh. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You know, and we know if you love God, because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you keep his commandments, you love it. And then all things going to work for you, even you're going to get to the purpose of God, what people don't understand, is to become God. Go ahead and read. For whom he did foreknow, uh -huh. he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So if he foreknow you, that means he is going to predestinate you to be conformed to the image of his son. What is his son right now? Isn't Jesus God? Yes. And if you're going to be conformed to his image in the fullest of the sense, then what will you be? God, it's all that simple. Don't take no rocket science to figure that out. Go ahead and read. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Go ahead. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, uh -huh. them he also called. Go ahead. And whom he called, them he also justified. Uh -huh. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Because that's what he's going to do, sisters and brother. So he said, he called you. And those he called, He's justified and know that he's justified. He's, he glorified, or he will glorify you, because there's an a, a, a end time to that, sisters and brothers. Because we want to have a glorious body, just like Jesus' glorious body. Then we will be conformed to his image. But then you ask the question, well, who did he call? You know, well, see, he don't call, brother used to say, he don't call everybody. And then they say, well, you know, he predestinated. That's one of the fights I had with them East Side Jakes. He predestinated. That means we got it going on. Why, why should you have it going on? And he didn't predestinate everybody else. There is a little explanation behind that, sisters and brothers. Because when it come to call, let's see who all that the Lord called. Let's go into 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter, the third chapter. Because I have a real problem with people thinking they have special. Like I say sometimes, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. What makes you more highly favored than anybody else? Being that you are a son or daughter of Adam, just like everybody else. So what gives you preeminence that the Lord going to favor you higher than anybody else? I have a real problem with that, sisters and brothers. Because you're trying to make the Lord a respecter of person. But the Lord wants everybody to come. And we're going to show you this. Verse 3. 2 Peter 3 and verse 3. Go ahead. 
knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, uh-huh. walking after their own lust. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Uh-huh. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Now, these people are actually saying, in every generation, they said the Lord is coming. But he haven't come. So what make you think we should believe he's going to come in our generation if he's going to come at all, if he exists at all? The reason people say the Lord can come tomorrow or in this generation, that generation, because they don't know prophecy, sisters and brother. We know when the Lord come, when the signs that he told us to look out for. When the great tribulation come up on the world, I know then that it's three and a half years from the coming of the Lord. When they build a temple in Jerusalem, I know then the abomination is going to go there. That's when it's time to flee. When they start making sacrifices, animal sacrifices, on the real altar, I know that we have 1,020 days before the abomination go to the holy place. This is prophecy. It is all written, just like the Pharisees knew what Jesus was going to be born. Mm -hmm. Prophecy, sisters and brothers. So the reason people have been saying they're going to come out every, in every generation or every year, that's because they have no knowledge. People say, well, you know, Christ can come any day. He cannot come any day. He can't come before the great tribulation. He can't go, come before the abomination of desolation and destruction. He cannot come before the moon turned black, red and the sun turned black mm -hmm. and the heavens rolled back like a scroll. He can't come before that. It's too many things that we must see before the Lord can come. So what's happening is people don't have any understanding. And so it's all, oh, man, in every generation, the Lord says coming. No, the Lord have his time set. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8, and go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, uh -huh. that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Go ahead. And a thousand years is one day. So the Lord has set a time. So he gave man seven days, sisters and brothers. And these seven days mean he gave man 7,000 years. How do you know that, bro Brother Boo? It's because the Lord told his man. Not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, in the day that you eat of that tree, that is the day you die. Adam ate of the tree, sisters and brothers. When he ate of the tree, he didn't even know the, what a man and woman was supposed to do. But he lived 900 and some years. Did the Lord lie? No, because a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So the man didn't live a thousand years. And no man has lived, ever lived a thousand years. I think the oldest one is Methuselah. He, what did he live? 969 years? But he can't get to a thousand because God can't lie. So he gave this man, he's already set the time of man from the beginning to the end. He's going to come at the time upon it, but he gave us another, enough time to get it together. Why? Because he wants to save everybody. Go ahead and read. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. No, sir. As some men count slackness. Uh-huh. But his long suffering to usward. His long suffering for our, uh, uh, for our sake. Go ahead and read. Not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any shall perish. Go ahead and read. But that all should come to repentance. But that all should come to repentance. How absolute is all, sisters and brothers? Absolutely. That means that the Lord hung the shingle out to every man and woman, son and daughter of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. He wants everybody that's ever been born to be saved. Amen. So then who did he call? Everybody. Yes. But the problem is, who heard him? This is the whole thing. Let's go into Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter, because people always want to put everything on God. God put it out there. You don't want it. Like a brother was telling me about this guy that called himself atheist. They got a new name. As I tell you what, I, next time, I'm an atheist. You don't believe in God? No, well, God said you had to breathe to live and put a pillow over his mouth. <laughs> See if you can live without breathing. That's something you can put a, you can put a, 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 a fork in. 
You'd be surprised at a simple thing that you can quote on all these smart people that come out the word of God. Hebrews 3 and verse 7. Because the, God, the Lord has called, sisters and brothers, his single is out. His invitation is out. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, uh -huh. today, if you will hear his voice, uh -huh. harden not your heart. See, this might be your day, this very day here, that you hear the voice go, well, we heard the Lord talk. Yeah, you hear him through his minister, sisters and brother. Harden not your heart. Otherwise, don't let us up. Don't say something stupid like, I was a Baptist born, and when I'm going to die, I'm going to be a Baptist gone. That's a stupid statement. <laughs> I said, of course you be gone to the lake of fire. I just finish it. Go ahead and read. What verse? Eight. Uh -huh. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, uh -huh. in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Go ahead. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. He said, don't harden your heart like Israel was when they, when they was in the wilderness. 40 years I did a uh, preach to these people, and they didn't pay me no attention. Go ahead and read. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation uh -huh. and said, they do always err in their heart. Go ahead. And they have not known my ways. Now, even though he gave them the commandments from Mount Sinai, he had Moses write them down twice. Read them, write them in a book also and read it to them. But still, they didn't know his ways. Why? Because they was not listening. He called. They didn't hear. Go ahead and read. So I swear in my wrath, uh -huh. they shall not enter into my rest. You know what he just told, said there? That these people ain't going to be in the first resurrection. Yeah. Out of all that, but the only one you can safely say that's going to be in the first resurrection is Moses, Joshua, and okay. Caleb. The rest of them is questioned. Don't you know that everybody says 600,000 footmen came out of Israel, beside, out of Egypt, beside men and women? Don't you know that only those that was 20 years old and upward, except for Joshua and Caleb, died in the wilderness and didn't even get to the promised land? Promised land about a week away. And he led them around for 40 years until every one of them died. And we're going to find out why. But go ahead and read. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, uh -huh. lest there be in, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So he said, if you hear me, harden my, don't harden your heart. Don't depart from me. Because he swore that those people would never be in his rest. What day of rest? Day is that? That's the thousand year millennium period. He just swore that these people would not be in the first resurrection. And we have time, we have a shot to be in the first resurrection. Don't you know everybody don't have to stand in judgment when the book's open? You can beat this thing now. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the other side. Instead of you being the judge, judgee, you are the judge. Because Jesus is on, not the only one that's going to be judging, sister and brother. We can read that to you. So this thing here, he's saying, look, take heed, brother, unless you have an evil heart and don't believe in God and depart from him. Take heed. Skip down to verse 15 and read. While it is said, uh -huh. today if you will hear his voice, Go ahead. harden not your hearts as in the provocation. So he said, don't do like them. Today, even this day, if you hear the Lord's voice, don't head up like a lettuce. Don't harden your heart. Just like Israel was when it provoked God and they all died in the wilderness except for the younger people. That's why we won't baptize nobody that's under 20 years old. Because God has shown us, if you're 20 years old, that means that you're responsible. Anything under that, maybe you ain't so responsible. So how are you going to get baptized into a blood covenant? I do mean blood covenant. That if you break, you're going to get cut off and you're a child. We won't do it here. We want to make sure that you know what you're getting into. So the Lord said, the day you hear my voice, don't harden your heart like the people in the wilderness. And he is knocking. Let's go into Revelation, the third chapter. He want you to hear him because he know if you don't hear him, then you, won't obey, have, you can't obey him. And if you can't obey him, you can't get salvation. It's all that simple. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. See, sisters and brothers, this is some serious business here. 
Somebody get up telling me, all you, all is important that God know you. We're going to show you how flawed that is. Revelation 3 and 20. Read it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not talking about the door of your house, sisters and brothers. He's talking about the door of your mind. He's knocking with his word. Go ahead and read. If any man hear my voice and open the door. Now listen now. Who is it on? If any man hear my voice and open the door. If any man hear his voice and don't open the door, then what's going to happen? He can't come in. But if any man hear and open the door, go ahead and read. I will come into him. I will come into him. And will sup with him. Uh-huh. And he with me. How is he going to come into you? Is the Lord going to walk into your head? Yes, through his word, sisters and brothers. He going to come through his word. That's why he told Ezekiel, eat the roll in the, in the hand. That's why he told John, eat the book. If you open up and don't harden your heart, in other words, don't head up like a lettuce, he will come into you. But it is on you. He's standing at the door and he's knocking. It's on you. Let's go into Revelation 22 because it's all about you first. You got to make the first move. And this man telling you that you don't have to make no move, he is trying to take your crown away even before you get it. Revelation 22 and verse 16. We're going to start at 16. We're going to show you what the Lord saying, sisters and brothers. Because I'm going to tell you something. I keep telling people. Like I know a lot of people when I went to that funeral I was at Thursday. When I started telling them, there wasn't nobody in heaven looking down on them smiling. They started popping up like corks and walking out. I said, because she is in the box. I said, she have not made a homecoming. When we take her to the graveyard and put her in the ground, then she will make a homecoming because the Lord said, dust thou art and dust thou shall return. I took you out of the ground and I'm going to send you back there. Satan is the one that came from heaven, sisters and brothers. I want you to remember this. Anybody that said that they home, people are made of homecoming, they are quoting Satan. They are dealing with his passion because Satan is the one that come from heaven. And if he can get back, he will be made his homecoming. You come from the ground. And the only time you're going to leave this earth is to meet the Lord in there and you coming back. The earth was created for you. It's all that simple. So the Lord said, I'm knocking at the door. Open up and let me in. This is the Lord knocking right now. Verse 16, Revelation 22 and 16. Okay, go ahead. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Uh-huh. I am the root and the offspring of David. Uh-huh. And the bright and morning star. He's the root and the offspring of David, sister and brother. That means he was around before David, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he says the bright and morning star. Don't you know Balaam talked about him when he was trying to curse Israel? He says star going to rise in Israel. This is talking Jesus here, sister and brother. But go ahead and read. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hears say, come. Go ahead. And let him that is a thirst come. And let him that is a thirst come. Go ahead and read. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. And whosoever will. How absolute is that? I mean, everybody can come and drink the water of life. All you got to do is believe this word. Huh? Because the Lord is calling everybody by the word. And he called you by his ministers. Because he ain't talking to nobody. Sometimes he preaches up there. Up oh, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. They just said, time out. Boom. Stop. Shut everything down. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you seen what happened to some of the prophets when them angels show up? They lay out, they fall all down, they ball up all on the ground. Some of them sick for days. And you're going to hear an angel, because you don't even understand that the Holy Ghost that bring the message is an angel. Holy Spirit, if you didn't follow all angels of spirit, and if they didn't follow uh, uh, Satan, they're still holy. Make some Holy Spirit, but you don't know that if you don't read, sisters and brothers. So the Lord calls you through men. Let's go into 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. This is simple, but people don't like simplicity. You like real complicated stuff so you can look smart. 
You look smart to somebody come along to have some understanding. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 13. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. 2 and 13. Okay, go ahead. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord. Uh-huh. Because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Ain't that something? So he's chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. What if you don't believe the truth? Then you ain't chosen. You understand what I'm saying? He sent the truth by you. He passed it by you. If you latch on to it, then you've been chosen. But if you let it go, you haven't been chosen. Go ahead and read. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. He calls it, but Paul said he called you by our gospel. Mm -hmm. How else are you begotten? The book tells you we are begotten by the yeah. word of God. God sent his word by men, through men. Wherefore? He called you through our gospel, just like he called everybody in here, through the gospel that come from the Israel of God. You heard it? You like what you heard? You said, I'm going to go and hear me some more. Mm -hmm. That is so simple, ain't it? Go ahead and read. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught. Go ahead. Whether by word or our epistle. He said, stand fast and hold on to this word that you have been taught. Whether somebody taught you verbally or sent you a letter. Hold on. Because this thing here will get away from you because everybody's trying to take it from you. Satan is busy. He got all his minions out there. When you start teaching somebody else, then somebody come up and get in your business. But the Lord has put a shingle out. Whosoever will, let him come. Let's go and pursue it. Let's go into Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Matthew chapter 22. And this guy going to get up and tell you, you don't have to know the Lord. All you got to do is for him to know you. No. He said, I want you to come and make my acquaintance. <laughs> you don't come and make my acquaintance. I don't know you. And we're going to show that clearly. Matthew's 22. We're going to start reading at verse 1. Matthew's 22 and verse 1. Jesus is going to throw a parable out here. 22 and 1. 22 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, uh -huh. which made a marriage for his son. So this guy gave a wedding for his son. Go ahead and read. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the uh, wedding. Uh -huh. And they would not come. So he sent forth and he... Send them invitation, and they would not come. And this is what people don't understand. God wants everybody to be saved, so he sent everybody an invitation. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Then saith he to his servants, uh -huh. the wedding is ready. Go ahead. But they which were bidden were not worthy. That didn't mean you didn't call. He didn't call you. He bid you. But because you didn't come, you weren't worthy of it. Go ahead and read. Go ye therefore into the highways, uh -huh. and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Go ahead. So those servants went out into the highways, uh -huh. and gathered together all as many as they found. Go ahead. Both bad and good. Uh -huh. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So now you get somebody up that's bad, they come, well, so you didn't call me because I'm bad. No, he called you too, mister. Mm -hmm. He called everybody. All you had to do was accept the invitation. And when you came, you had to come right. Go ahead and read. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Uh -huh. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? Wait a minute now. I didn't invite you to a wedding. This is a big occasion. You're supposed to dress for the occasion. What well, you come in with? Sweat shirt and blue jeans. Or like some brothers come in here sometime with a Sweatshirt on and them short, uh, what, did, what did they used to call them in the old days, nickels or something? 
You at church, mister. You ain't at no basketball game. <laughs> he coming there and he saw this man. He said, don't you know that you was coming to a wedding? Why aren't you dressed for the wedding? Go ahead and read. And he was speechless. Uh-huh. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot uh -huh. and take him away uh -huh. and cast him into outer darkness. Go ahead. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, uh, I'm going to interpret that for you. Cast him into the lake of fire. But pay attention to this next verse. Because this tell it all. Go ahead and read. For many are called, but few are chosen. That tells it all, don't it? He called everybody. But everybody is not going to be chosen. When he called to this marriage. What marriage is this? Let's go into Revelation 19 chapter and see. See, it's all here, sisters and brothers. You don't have to guess about nothing. You don't have to interpret nothing. All you got to do is flip these pages and read this book. And I said over and over, anybody that come to the Israel of God and stay here more at least a year, then ain't nobody cutting you off. You are cutting yourself off if you don't stay with this word. But we're going to teach you something. We're going to teach this book, sisters and brothers. Revelation 19 and we're going to start reading at verse 6. Revelation 19 and 6. Revelation 19 and 6. Okay, go ahead. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Uh-huh. And as the voice of many waters. Go ahead. And as the voice of mighty thundering saying. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Look, it said hallelujah. It didn't say hallelujah. Because I take offense when people say that. You're going to modify the word. Yah. It's no longer Yah. He is Jesus now. Because he told you I come in my father's name. He told Moses. Your fathers knew me as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But by my name Jehovah, I was not known. But now when he came in the flesh, he didn't come in the name of Yahweh or Jehovah. He came in his father's name, which was Jesus. And everybody spitting on that. It's hallelujah, not hallelujah. Because Yah is no longer Yah after he came in the flesh. Amen. He is Jesus. Amen. Just a little something of learning, something on your way to learning something. Go ahead and read. What verse was that? The end of six. Go ahead. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Uh -huh. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Also, this is the marriage that we're talking about. And he is here at that time. You know why? Said for, for the Lord God omnipotent reign it. He is here. He's sitting on the throne of David. And I said, Blessed those that the that have came to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Go ahead and read. And they've done what? And they're dressed for it. Go ahead and read. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Uh-huh. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Oh, so this what this guy didn't have on when he come to the wedding. He wasn't righteous. He had the wrong clothes on, sisters and brothers. He came to the Lord as he was. Like he preaches all the time, come to the Lord as you are. You don't want me to come to, as I, come to you as I was. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I was a terrible person. You know that gypsy that your mama warned you about? That was me. <laughs> I'll take your woman. I'll take your money. And anything else I can get out of you if you, wasn't, if you was too slow to stay out of my way. I didn't have no conscience about it until I came into the word. When I came into the word, it changed me. Just like your brothers when they had killed Jesus and realized what they had done, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? First thing he said, repent and be baptized. Repent. I run into this word. I repented. I did. I got real scared. I said, boy, ain't no way I can get purged all this wrong I done did in my life. That's why I tell people all the time, if the Lord can clean me up and make me a preacher too, Fixing you is cakewalk. 
And I am serious. What verse are we? Verse 9. Go ahead and read. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So now, that marriage, that's, that wedding, that the marriage that the, uh, that the father gave for his son, that son was Jesus. And if you going to become a part of this marriage, that's how do you do that? By entering into the covenant. What is the words of the covenant? The Ten Commandments. People don't understand that marriage is a covenant. That's why the Lord take issue with people that break a covenant. So you agree to keep his covenant, then you are his wife. It's all that simple. But people don't like covenants. You don't like to be obligated. But if you're going to serve God, you're going to be obligated, sisters and brothers. If you don't, you ain't going to get no salvation because the Lord called you and you got to come. But if you don't come, that's your prerogative. And when you come, you got to come right. If you don't, you're going to be just like that young man that showed up. You're going to walk into a house of holiness and you're going to be dirty. That ain't going to work. Let's go into 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. See, people don't like to talk about this stuff, you know, because you want to be able to do whatever you want. That's why they try to get away with the law. That's why I always laugh at people going to tell me, well, you don't have to keep the law. But, then you, but look at them sinners over there. Wait a minute. If you don't have to keep the law, if the law ain't no more, then there ain't no sinners. Because sin is the transgression of the law. I woke up tomorrow and found out there wasn't no law, and I could actually couldn't sin no more. Then I would try and see if I can catch up on them things that they call sin. I tell people all the time, I ain't no good brother. I'm just scared of God. It's all that simple. Because I know what he'll do to people that used to do the things that I used to do. Second Peter, first chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 2. Second Peter 1 and 2. Okay, go ahead. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Uh huh. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He said, look, according to his divine power hath given all things to us that pertain to life. That's talking about the eternal life, sisters and brothers. And godliness, that's to become God. Mm -hmm. People think that's just a loose statement. No, no. He's giving you everything you need to become immortal and God. Go ahead and read. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of the Father who has called us through his word, sisters and brothers. Go and virtue. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Oh, so you have to give diligently to make your calling and election sure. It's just not, you can't say, well, you know, since the Lord didn't call me now, I'm saved now. You can't do that. You got to do the things that make sure that your salvation remains. Finish that verse. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You ain't going to fall, sisters and brothers. When the Lord call you and give you his laws and his statutes, you grow in the word. You find out about him and start walking the way you, he wants you to walk. That is making your election and calling sure. It ain't just since I've been called, you know, I'm saved and I'm always saved. No, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. You have to do things. You have to keep his law. You have to keep his statute. Let's go into Isaiah the 65th chapter. You have to do the thing that the Lord wants you to do and don't be perpetrating because he know when you're perpetrating and he don't like it. He know when you're walking in your own imagination instead of his word, and he don't like it. Isaiah 65, we're going to start at verse 2. Isaiah 65, and we're going to start reading at verse 2. 
Isaiah 65 and 2. See, serving God is easy when you find out what to do. And really, when you believe it, what makes it real easy when you believe it is to get a whiff of that lake of fire. Maybe it wouldn't so be, be so bad if you could work yourself out of it, but you can't. You can't get out. When you go in there, it is over with for you escaping. Not over with for you. You just don't burn up. You got some religion around telling you don't burn up. I remember a long time ago we had this. It was this worldwide church of Christ. They teach that once you, you know, you ain't going to burn forever. You're just going to burn up. We had a sister go out there. They had some big hotel out there, the guy teaching. She hit him with, went and hit him with Isaiah 66, where you're going to go and look up on the carcass of them men <laughs> whose fire's not quenched and the, and, and the worms die not. He couldn't even answer her. And when the teaching was over, everywhere she went, he was walking behind her. <laughs> because she took this book and showed him. How can you not? Understand that when Jesus said, if your eye offend, you pluck it out. Yes. It's better to go in the, into a, a, a kingdom with one eye than to go into hell where the fire is not quenched mm -hmm. and the flesh will never die. And even though with the hand and everything else. Yeah. You mean you're going to tell me Jesus don't know what he's talking about? You can't look up on a carcass if it's burnt up. Okay, you can look up on his ashes, can't you? That's right. <laughs> But still, people don't listen, but they're all holy. 65 and 3. Go ahead. 2, brother. Go ahead. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, uh -huh. which walketh in a way that was not good. And what way is that? Go ahead. After their own thoughts. After their own thoughts. He said, I have spread out my hand. He wants you to hear me. Go ahead and read. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Uh-huh. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. Now, I, can, I, I give you a good example of people that's, uh, 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 um, uh, making the Lord, provoking the Lord continually before his face. Today is the Lord's Sabbath day, the seventh day a week. You're going to get all these people tomorrow going to say, well, Sunday is the Christian Sabbath day. How are you going to tell Christ what day is he set aside? And he done wrote it in the book. He said, you provoking me continually. Go ahead and read. Which remain among the graves. That's, that's, that's the spiritual graves. Go ahead. And lodge in the monuments. Go ahead. Which eat swine's flesh. Uh-huh. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Ain't that something? That's why I mean it. Now, you're going to get you a, some pig, catfish, and shrimp, put them on the table, and you're going to bless it in the name of the Lord. I know if I was him, I'd be provoked too. Yeah. I told you not to eat this stuff. And you're going to bless it in my name? You called telling me that I'm stupid. He didn't like this. Go ahead and read. What else they say? Go ahead and read. Would say, stand by thyself. Uh huh. Come not near to me. Go ahead. For I am holier than thou. So he's holier than these old people that keeps the law. These old legalists. Don't you know y'all are legalists? That keeps the Lord's Sabbath day, keeps the Lord's dietary law. They holier than we are. But what does the Lord say about these people? Go ahead and read. These are a smoke in my nose, uh -huh. a fire that burneth all the day. Have, can you imagine that? You got smoke in your nose all the time. I remember when I went somewhere with my neighbor before he died. I didn't smoke because I quit years before that. He had to win the room up in the center one at a time, and he lit up a cigarette. It looked like somebody put a spike right in my brain. That cigarette messed with me. But God said, these people like smoke in his nose. It's like fire that's burning all day long in his nose. I mean, he letting you know he's pretty irritated, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Is he going to deal with them people, sisters and brothers? You know why? It's because they running around telling me, you know, we know the Lord. He's my savior. I talk to him all the time. But then you don't keep his law. You know the law, why don't you? Oh, you don't, all you got to do is believe on Christ. You don't have to keep the no commandment. I say, you know, well, you don't know the Lord. Oh, yeah, I do. I said, the Lord take issue with that. And let me show you that. Let's go on the second 
of 1 John, the second chapter. The Lord take issue with that. And I want you to write this down, fold it up and put it in your wallet, or either fold it up and put it in your purse. So the next time somebody said they don't keep the law, you read this to them. That's tantamount them out to slapping them down spiritually. Maybe they need a good slapping down. Second John. Uh, first John, rather, the second chapter. First John, the second chapter. I tell people this, this Bible is a real weapon. That's why this word is called the sword of the spirit. Because you can take this here and you can slap anybody down. Verse 1. 1 John 2 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. My little children, these things write I unto you, uh -huh. that ye sin not. No, that ye sin not. How can you sin if there ain't no law? What is the biblical definition of sin? Transgression. Transgression of the law. So right away, this is a, this is a statement, a futile statement, ain't it? Go ahead and read. And if any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father, uh -huh. Jesus Christ the righteous. But if you sin and unintentionally, that's what he's there for, to plead your cause. Go ahead and read. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And he can do it because he is the sacrifice for our sins. Go ahead and read. And not for ours only, uh -huh. but also for the sins of the whole world. Uh-huh, go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him. And hereby we do know that we know him. Go ahead and read. If we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. Think about it. Here by we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's a big statement. Mm -hmm. But keep reading. Go ahead and read. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a liar. Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. And the him. truth is not in him. Put that in your wallet. Put it in your purse. Next time somebody tells well, I know the Lord, I said, okay, you keep his command. No, then you hit him with this. You're a liar, and the truth is not in you. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But whoso keepeth his word, uh -huh. in him verily is the love of God perfected. But if you keep God's commandments, the love of God is perfected in you. Because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Go ahead and read. Hereby know we that we are in him. So when you keep his word, you know he is in you, and you are in him. But if you say you know him, and you don't keep his commandments, sisters and brothers, you are a liar. Hmm. Yes, People get mad with me when I tell them that. You don't know God. You ain't never met him. You don't have a clue. But if you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. Because he said if you keep his law, his love is perfected in you. Ain't that correct? Mm -hmm. We just read that. 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. See, that's all you have to do is read this Bible, sisters and brothers. That's why we call ourselves the Israel of God Bible study class. People on the phone sometimes. Well, do y'all have classes there? I say, yeah, every Sabbath day. All you mean, y'all got classroom? I said, the whole church is a classroom. <laughs> Bring your Bible and some pencil and paper. And let's go to school. That's why I had my cap on at the bank out there with the, uh, <laughs> the University of Israel. Oh, you go to the University of Israel? <laughs> yeah, I do. And I started to talk to her. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're going to learn something that you can pass on. And you can read it. 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, and verse 2. 8 and 2. Go ahead. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Sometimes you get people know so much until they don't know nothing. Go ahead. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Oh, so now we're starting to get somewhere. Anybody that love God, then God then he is known of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you love him, oh, he know about you. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you're going to keep his commandment. He said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Let's go and pursue this a little bit. Let's go into Galatians, the fourth chapter. Because we are just reading this book, sisters and brothers. 
I love reading the Bible because it's going to say the same thing every time. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians the fourth chapter. Because in order, because it tells you the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That means that you will find out about it now. And now you're starting to get scared. Because you know this guy hurt people if they cross him. But people don't like to talk that stuff because they done made him all fluffy and love everybody. Powder puff. Jesus is the powder puff. <laughs> Galatians 4 and 3. Go ahead and read. Even so, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Uh -huh. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. See, we was under the elements of the world. We couldn't escape. But God sent forth his son, so made of a woman. That means that Jesus didn't have no biological father. Made under the law. That means under the law of animal sacrifice. That could never remove sin. Go ahead and read. To redeem them that were under the law. Uh-huh. That we might receive the adoption of he, sons. Redeem means he come to recover you. The ones that was under the law that we might receive the adoption. Why couldn't we receive it at first? Because it tells you in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, that the blood of bulls and goats could never remove sin. So as long as they were under the law of sacrifice, you couldn't be recovered. But when Jesus came, the real sin offering, and was sacrificed for the sin, then you had been recovered. Why do you think you're talking about redeem, recover, reconcile? To bring something back that was lost. So when he came, he sent his son to recover, to redeem us that was bound on the law that couldn't remove sin. Go ahead and read. That was the end of five. Uh, skip down to verse 8. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. So when ye didn't know God, then you've dealt with paganism. Mm. Go ahead and read. But now, after that ye have known God. But now, after you had known God, go ahead. Or rather are known of God. Oh, rather known of God now. Go ahead. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, uh -huh. whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. So now, why is it that once you have known God, and now God know about you, why are you going to turn back to sin and go back in the bondage of the death that Jesus pulled you up out of? We see a lot of people do that. Brothers, leave it while I come into a higher learning. Higher like what? What's higher than the word of God? But once you walk away from it, you got your problem. But the whole thing is, when you know him, now he know you. And how is it that he finds out about you? What prompts him to notice you? Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Malachi, the third chapter. See, the Lord had this thing laid out. So you don't have to wonder, how is it I can get God's attention? You finna find out right now how you can get his attention. Malachi chapter 3. Because Lord, God is an, ain't, ain't no great big mystery in what the Lord is doing. He wants you to become God. And he's making it as easy as he can for you to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. He made you a free agent. He wants you to come to him. He ain't going to send no angel out there and save you in spite of yourself. He's going to throw you down and put an arm lock on you and drag you into salvation. It don't work like that. He says, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. Open up. Let me. Now here is how you get God's attention. Let's start at verse 16. Malachi 3 and 16. Okay, go ahead. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. They that feared the Lord, they spoke often one to another. Go ahead and read. And the Lord hearkened uh -huh. and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Ain't that something? They got to talking about God and trying to find out about him and talking about what much they 
really wanted to get to him, and he listened. That's what hearkened me. And he heard them. And he wrote it, wrote their name in a book that he called the Book of Remembrance. He wrote them down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord look of what, hosts. Look what he said. They shall be mine. Now, he didn't got their attention. He locked what they're doing. He locked what their mind is. He said, he's going to be mine. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. In that day when I make up my jewels, uh -huh. and I will spare them. Go ahead. As a man spareth his own son that serveth him. He said, in the day that I make up my jewels, I'm going to spare them. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a part of my jewelry cabinet. They're going to be spared like my son because they will be my sons and daughters. How did you get his attention? By speaking often in his name mm -hmm. and seeking him. So he looked down and he heard you. Then he put your name in a book. Malachi called it Book of Remembrance. Do that mean that now you're in the book you saved? Look like you're in the book, you sure will be saved, right? He already said what he's going to do to you, right? right? Well, let's examine this a little bit before we run away with it. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. People like to read something. You behold, the horse ran up the hill. You read the, and then all of a sudden you want to make a sermon out of the. <laughs> But the wasn't the subject, the horse was. <laughs> People do that. Hebrews 10, and we're going to start at verse 26. Hebrews 10 and 26. 10 and 26. This is something you might lay to heart. Go ahead and read. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, uh -huh. there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. In other words, the animal ain't going to die for you no more because Jesus died for your sins and he ain't going to die no more. So if you sin willfully, after you know about the truth, what do you have coming? Go ahead and read. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, uh -huh. which shall devour the adversaries. So that's all you have to look for. It's a lack of fire. Boy, that's, kind of, that's, that's a terrible life to live, man. Go ahead and read. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Uh -huh. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Look, sisters and brothers, I hear brothers talking about, see, see, I, I'm glad, see, Moses, them, it was hard. They stoned people to death. Jesus going to do you worse than that. That's right. Moses stoned you to death. You wake up in the resurrection in the uh, 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 white throne yeah. Jeremy, you still might make it. But when Jesus puts you in that lake of fire, ain't no making it. It's over with. You know why? It's because you have rejected the grace of this God that became a man and allowed himself to be beaten, spit on, and everything. Isaiah, the, 50, uh, 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 the 51st chapter, said his visage was more, that's his uh, uh, face and body, was more marred than any man. They beat him real bad. They really messed him up. And then when time on the cross with ropes like everybody else, they nailed nails in his hands and in his feet. And now you're going to tell him, oh, she didn't do nothing for me. He said, boy, I'm going to barbecue you so good. <laughs> so when you turn to the Lord, sisters and brothers, this is a walk you can't turn away from. Skip now to verse 35. Verse 35. And go ahead. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. So I'm going to tell you, he says, so don't, don't, don't cast away your confidence in the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which hath great recompense of reward. Uh-huh. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. He said, now you have need of patience. Now don't cast away your confidence. You've done well. And you've been walking a long time. You've taken a lot of heat. You've been sanctified. In other words, all your friends have cast you away. Don't nobody want to talk to you. Don't nobody want to hang out with you no more. You're walking a walk alone. You understand? And that's going to happen to you. If it not haven't happened, I'm telling you now, you're in trouble. 
So people fight sometimes. Yes. I, don't, I can't take no more of this. Then all of a sudden you go back to the world. That's why the Lord said, look, you have need of patience that after you have done the right thing that you might receive the promise. So when you're in that book, the Lord already promised you you're going to be one of my Jews. Ain't that what we read? Because you're in the book. Does that mean you're going to stay? If your patience run out, I don't know. Let me go.